Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. Hello and welcome to Northley United Church's Virtual Worship. I'm Leanne. I'm so glad you joined me today. As we begin our service, we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Mississauga Peoples of the Credit, who came to this place long before we did, and our responsibility for the territory wherein our church resides. As we begin, we, I have a couple of announcements for you. The first one is that coming up is the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. And uh, the World Council of Churches put together some prayers and activities which I would like to invite you to join me in. I have created videos for each day of the week with the prayers and um, would love for you to uh, join me on the journey of prayer for the week. So the link for the videos is available through News Bites, through our website, and or you could go directly to our YouTube channel, which is Northly United and look for the playlist Week of Prayer. Um, you can go to the United, um, sorry, the World Council of Churches link that's in News Bites if you want to get a printed copy of the prayers. Um, otherwise, just open the, the daily prayer uh, video link and, and join along with me. You might want to have a candle ready because I light a candle that begins our time together. So I do hope you'll join me. And uh, if you're having any difficulties um, finding things just send me an email but my northly email is unfortunately not working very well right now so you'll have to email me at alstromlian at gmail.com we're working on correcting the problem my apologies if you have sent me an email to my northly website or northly email address and not uh, received a response it's not that i'm ignoring you it's that it's just not working right now but we'll try to fix it up real soon. My uh, Gmail address should be in a recent News Bites. Um, but if you're having any difficulty at all reaching me, reach out to Trisha and she will, she'll get us connected. With that then, let us now uh, begin with our call to rest in the Spirit. Something made the hairs stand up on our necks. Was it you, O oh God? Was it you that we saw blowing over the water? Was it you that we heard moving through those feet? Was it you that we felt in the beating of our own hearts? Was it you that called our names? Come, O oh God, come to search us, come to know us again. We were knit in your womb. We have tried to count your works. Come, O oh God, so that we can hear you calling our names here and now. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Let us pray. God calls the small and helps them do great things. God calls the weak and reveals their hidden gifts. God calls the rejected and opens their eyes to their worth. Here we are, Lord, humble and waiting. To let us gather old and young, small and great, to dream God's dreams, to receive God's power, and do God's deeds. Here we are, Lord. Shine the light of your love on us. Kindle your spirit within us. Work your redeeming will in us that all the world may be one. May the power of your love. Amen.
join to sing. Alleluia. Praise to our servant King. Alleluia. Let all with heart and voice, saved by God's gracious choice, Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he had trouble seeing, was reading with a magnifying glass in his room. The lamp of God, the sun, had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Here I am, and ran to Eli. Here I am, for you called me. I did not call you. Go and lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, for you called me. I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli. Here I am, for you called me. I did not call you. Go and lie down again. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall speak. You shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. Speak for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. Here I am. What was it that God told you? Do not hide it from me. I believe God wants you to tell me all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
O God, may your Holy Spirit be upon these words and in the meditations of all our hearts. Amen. So, Samuel and Eli. Did you know that Samuel was just 12 years old when he heard the holy whisper, the call from God to prophecy? Did you know that his mother, Hannah, was um, barren and prayed to God that if she was able to have a child, that she would give that child over to servanthood, to serve God in the priesthood? Did you know that when Samuel was young and of age, his mother Hannah gave him over to Eli so that Eli could be Samuel's mentor and teach him the ways of the priesthood? Did you know that Eli was aged and blind and actually had somewhat failed as a priest in the sense that his sons were not controllable and were stealing, stealing offerings. Did you know that Samuel's acceptance of the prophecy with Eli's mentoring changed the course of things for the Israelites? They went from being a community with judges back to prophecy towards having kings where David would emerge. Jesse's line, the same line that Jesus would come from. So interesting, the context of this story has some, some kind of interesting uh, points to it. And all of these points will perhaps help us to reflect on what it, how it is that we discern holy wisdom, the holy whisper of God that calls us to prof prophecy, to speaking truth, to power, that calls us to, to use our gifts in a particular way in the world. You know, there, there have been contemporary stories of people called to uh, give voice to those who have no voice. There have been people called to speak truth to power. And the first one that I thought of that sort of is like this story for me is Craig Kielberger. Craig Kielberger, at the age of 12, read the Toronto Star. And he read that there were young children that were slaves. They were chained to carpet looms, making a pittance in order to um, support their families. And Craig was just astounded that, that adults in the world, adult leaders, would allow this to happen. So Craig wrote letters to the Prime Minister of Canada and he wrote letters to leaders in other parts of the world and he met powerful people to uh, convey a voice of opposition to this, the treatment of these children and he created a movement called Kids Can Free the Children. Extraordinary. The other one who came to mind was Malala Yousafzai. Remember Malala? Malala um, was raised in a family where her father actually believed that girls should be educated and she was yet she was in a culture where this was unacceptable. But Malala, with the support of her, her family, wanted to give voice to all other girls, um, for all other girls, by speaking truth to power that they deserve to have a right to learn and be educated like their brothers. And uh, she did just that. She gave voice to this issue and she got a lot of pushback for it. In fact, uh, she was the victim of a violent assault. She was shot in the face and survived. Now she could have crawled in a corner and went silent and stopped being prophetic, but she refused to do that. It was important to her to continue to speak up for girls who wanted to learn and be educated. And she continues to this day. The other person that I thought about um, obviously, and I've spoken of before, is Greta Thunberg, who went to school, learned all about what was going on with the climate crisis at school, and again was mortified that adult leaders had not, were not doing anything to change the situation, and 
She gave voice to the, her concerns for this issue as a young person who would have a future in dealing with the consequences of all our actions if we didn't do some um, significant um, thinking and make some changes around the issues of global climate. And uh, she also got pushback, but she continues to um, speak for all other youth. She created a movement as well. All three of them created movements where um, others joined in and um, spoke against the powers that be challenging them to make change and address the issues that were so important to the young people of our time. So prophecy still remains and it's not just 12 year olds and young people of course it's adults as well. I recently started watching TikTok videos and there are a number of people young and old who are giving voice to issues that impact others who have uh, little voice or have not been successful in making changes, Aboriginal peoples, um, Black Lives Matter peoples, uh, LBGTQ peoples, um, people who are concerned about the climate crisis, etc. Um, they're, they're putting their voices out there uh, in this forum and uh, and there are others who come along to support them, and it's it's wonderful that that they do so. Having said that, there are other voices out there that are we question and wonder about, um, you know, their motivation. There are different kinds of voices, and I guess I guess today what I want to do is sort of reflect a little bit about um, how we discern a holy whisper how we discern whether something is holy wisdom. Um, this discernment is important because there are so many different voices out right now. And there's so many people that are challenging that with conspiracy theories and, and various things, um, putting agendas out there that are, you know, competing in opposition to the point of being, you know, raising this uh, violent conflict in places, um, particularly the U.S. right now. So I did some searching. I wanted to sort of find a way to help us all to discern um, how we might define something as holy wisdom, how we might define something as a call from God, because we know that people have defended some pretty awful things in the name of God. So in our tradition, what helps us? I came across a video by Rick Warren who wrote the book Purpose Driven Ministry and Purpose Driven Youth Ministry, both of which I have used in the past to help guide my ministry. And what Rick Warren does in his uh, video is basically sort of take from the call of Samuel and, and then frame it in our biblical and Christian um, tradition and narrative. And what he points out to is that there is a conviction, a very powerful conviction that is a part of a call to holy wisdom, to prophecy, you know, speaking for God. And, and that conviction is deep. It's connected to um, our soul, which, which has been described as the seat of our, um, the soul is sort of the, the home of God within us. Um, so that deeper, deeper place of knowing that sort of connects with every cell of our body. It's a strong, strong um, conviction that is part of a call. The other thing that he points out is that it's usually associated with something bigger than oneself. Often liberating others, um, it's often um, associated with um, integration Bringing, whole, bringing pieces together to create an integrity, a wholeness. In um, integral theory, we talk about second tier consciousness, where we hold everything, opposites and, and dualism in tension. We bring things together. And so the call is, is a God call. It's a holistic call, um, addressing something that will transform all of us. He also points out that the call usually comes in the support of a community that has as its 
values, that, that integrity, that wholeness, that coming together, the, the uniting of, of humanity into a, a wholeness. And um, the other thing he points out is that um, it's grounded in love. So in our Christian tradition, we might say it's grounded in Christ, in following Christ. It's grounded in our discipleship. It's rooted in um, a tradition moving and living and, and having its practices and being in a consciousness that is compassionate and loving and grace-filled. So there are characteristics that we, would, we, we can sort of think about if we want to discern whether or not we're called. You know, as, as a minister, I have to go through a discernment process with a community of peers and lay people to, to discern whether or not my sense of call from God is an authentic call from God. And it's a complex uh, thing that um, we go, we enter into. It's not simply a, a reaction and a momentary whim where we decide, oh yeah, you know, I want to do this thing or I feel God's calling me to do this thing. It's a, it's a process. And uh, so I think it's important for us to consider all this as we listen to all of these competing voices out there um, and reflect on Samuel's call. That a call from God is, is something big and something deep something within a context that seeks redemption, reconciliation, wholeness. And it, we require the support of a community that understands um, the importance of careful discernment, thoughtful discernment, and, and, uh, and guides us in that way. So as we consider all that's going on in the world, as we consider Samuel's call to prophecy, Perhaps we might engage those who feel this conviction, but challenge it, push, push back a little bit for some, you know, deeper reflection around it. For those people who differ from us, who feel strongly in ways that are different, perhaps we could just enter with questions and, you know, curiosity dig a little deep to help them to reflect, to find their authentic um, place, their authentic source. If we respond in fear, if we respond out of hate, we know that's not a good place for any of us. But if we respond in love with a desire to build relationship and build peace, perhaps in those cases we are definitely on the right track. And of course, I'm not the expert. I give all of this up to the Spirit for shared discernment as we make choices about how we are called as individuals and as a community in our world today. We pray for guidance. May we be led by the Spirit. Amen. Let my love be shown Will you let
Let us pray. Beloved God, you know us inside and out and you still call us to serve you. Honestly, we are often hesitant, afraid and wish to remain hidden. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Empower us to answer your call with here I am, Lord. Empower us to follow you when you call us to follow you. God of mercy and justice, so many have gone before us working to bring justice and peace to our country, to our world. Their footsteps seem too big to step into, to continue the work you have called us all to. So we hesitantly step one step at a time bringing your seeds of hope, justice, and peace in a world crying out for them. O God of hope, we pray for our country and all countries in our world, for their leaders. We pray especially for the U.S., for the inauguration of their new president, that it will be done safely that the tumultuous times that they experience will turn to peace. We pray for the healing of their nation, for reconciliation, for forgiveness and peace. O God of peace, we pray for your compassion and healing for all those in our congregation who are in need. We pray for your comfort and presence for all who are grieving, lonely, or in despair. We pray for warmth, shelter, clothing, and food for those who are without, our neighbors, those in our city, those all over the world. O oh God, we say to you this day, here we are, your servants, willing to preach your word, willing to offer care where care is needed, Presence where presence is needed. Your love where your love is needed. O oh God, strengthen us for your ministry today and every day. And now together we pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I invite you to go now. Listen for the voice of the Lord and follow wherever it leads. Do not be dominated by anything. Allow no room within yourselves for deceit or fear, but offer yourselves as a temple for the Spirit. And may God be with you and speak through you. May Jesus Christ be one with you and raise you to life. And may the Holy Spirit dwell within you and make you holy. We go in peace to love and serve our God. In the name of Christ, amen.